Hello everyone. I'll be talking about the contribution of vaccines towards global health. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of human life worldwide and presents an unprecedented challenge to the public health, food system and the world of work. The economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. Historically, pandemic has forced human to break with the past and imagine their world anew. This one is no different. It is a portal, a gateway between one world and the next. In just a few months time, the COVID-19 crisis has brought about years of change in all the sectors and regions. We cannot forget this. Ours is a time of exciting technological change. The era of brilliant new discoveries hold the promise of a more prosperous future for all. So, amidst all the challenges, COVID-19 vaccines and treatments are the only solution and they can best perform in conjunction with the long-term overall public health strategy. The next question that comes in our mind is what are vaccines? A vaccine is a way to build our body's natural immunity to a disease before we get sick. This keeps us from getting and spreading the diseases. Do you know how vaccines work? For most vaccines, a weakened form of the disease-causing microbe is injected into your body. This is usually done with a shot in the leg or arm. As the microbe enters in our body, it detects the invading germs and in response reduces antibodies, that is our body soldiers to fight against them. Those antibodies then stay in for a long time in our body. In many cases, they stay for the rest of our lives. If you are ever exposed to the disease again, your body will recognize the microbe that was injected earlier as foreign, destroy it and keep a record of it. This is called as immunological memory. So we can say a vaccine is a biological preparation that improves immunity to a particular disease. A vaccine typically contains an agent that resembles a disease-causing microorganism and often made from weakened or killed form of the microbe. The term vaccine and vaccination was derived from variole vaccine, the term devised by Edward Jenner to denote cowpox. The second generation of vaccine was introduced in the 1880s by Louis Pasteur who developed commercial vaccines for chickenpox, cholera and anthrax. From the late 19th century, vaccines were considered a matter of national prestige and then compulsory vaccination laws were passed. Earlier, there were very few methods of development of vaccines. But with the advancement in technologies, various modern vaccines were developed. There are a few important type of vaccines. First, live attenuated vaccines, inactivated vaccines, subunit vaccines, toxoid vaccines, conjugate vaccine, DNA vaccine, recombinant vector vaccines. A brief discussion on how these vaccines types are made up of. First is the live attenuated vaccines contain a version of the living microbe that has been weakened. So it is the closest thing to a natural infection. These vaccines are a good teacher of the immune system. Example is vaccines against measles, mumps and chickenpox. After doing much work on weakened vaccine, then came the inactivated vaccines. Scientists produced inactivated vaccines by killing the disease-causing microbe with chemicals, heat or radiation. 
Such vaccines are more stable and safe than live vaccines because dead microbes cannot mutate back to their disease causing state. And the example of this is influenza, polio, hepatitis A and rabies. There are also subunit vaccines. Researchers observe that instead of using the entire microbe, their subunit can best stimulate the immune system because subunit vaccine contain only the essential antigens and not all the other molecules that make up the microbe. Example is plague. Further is the toxoid vaccines. For bacteria that secrete toxins or harmful chemicals, a toxoid vaccine might be the answer. These vaccines are used when a bacterial toxin is the main cause of illness. Scientists have found that they can inactivate toxins by treating them with formalin. Such detoxified toxins called toxoid are safe for use in the vaccine. Further is the conjugate vaccine. If a bacterium possesses an outer coating of sugar molecules called polysaccharide as many harmful bacteria do, researchers may try making a conjugate vaccine for it. Polysaccharide coating disguises a bacterium's antigen so that the immature immune system of infants and younger children cannot recognize or respond to them. Example is Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine. Further is the DNA vaccine, still in the experimental stages. These vaccines show a great promise and several types are being tested in humans. DNA vaccine make immunization to a new technological level. These vaccines dispense both with the whole organism and its part and get right down to the essentials, the microbes genetic material. Example is the influenza vaccine. Last one is the recombinant vector vaccine. Recombinant vector vaccines are experimental vaccines similar to the DNA vaccines, but they use an attenuated virus or bacterium to introduce microbial DNA to the cells of the body. Vector refers to the virus or bacterium used as a carrier and the example is DPT. World Health Organization have a separate unit for the research and development of vaccine. WHO initiator for vaccine research facilitate vaccine research and development against pathogen with significant disease and economic burden with the particular focus on low and middle income countries. Everyone needs vaccines. There has been many confusions and misunderstandings about vaccines, but vaccines are an important part of family and public health. They are recommended for infants, children, teenagers and adults. There are widely accepted immunization schedules available. They list what vaccines are needed and at what age they should be given. Vaccines prevent the spread of contagious, dangerous and deadly diseases. In the present scenario, by starting a vaccination drive, government is taking all necessary steps to ensure that we are well prepared to face the challenge and threat posed by the growing pandemic of COVID-19. This helps to preserve the herd immunity for the vast majority of people. Herd immunity means that if most people are immune to a disease because of vaccinations, it will stop spreading. Are there any side effects of vaccines? Yes, there can be, but these symptoms go away in a day or two. More serious side effects have been reported but are very rare. It takes years of development and testing before a vaccine is approved as safe and effective. Scientists and doctors study the research before approving a vaccine. 
they also inspect places where the vaccines are produced to make sure all rules are being followed after the vaccine is released to the public the government continues to monitor its use it makes sure there are no safety issues vaccines are safe the benefit of their use far outweigh any risk of side effects now i'll be telling about the vaccines that are available in india covaxin india's first indigenous covid-19 vaccine by bharat biotech is developed in collaboration with the indian council of medical research and national institute of virology the vaccine is developed using whole virion inactivated vero cell derived platform technology inactivated vaccines do not replicate and are therefore likely to revert and cause pathological effects they contain dead virus incapable of infecting people but still able to instruct the immune system to mount a defensive reaction against an infection it is a two dose vaccine regime given 28 days apart it is a vaccine with no sub zero storage no reconstitution requirement and ready to use liquid presentation in multi dose vial stable at 2 to 8 degrees celsius the efficacy against severe symptomatic covid-19 disease is shown to be 93.4% next is the covid shield vaccine the oxford extra zeneca vaccine is being manufactured locally by serum institute of india the vaccine is made from a weakened version of a common cold virus known as adenovirus from chimpanzees the composition of covid shield include inactivated adenovirus with segments of coronavirus when the vaccine is injected into a patient it prompts the immune system to start making antibodies and primes it to attack any coronavirus infection the jab can be safely stored at temperatures of 2 degree celsius to 8 degree celsius and is administered in two doses given between 4 and 12 weeks apart next is the johnson's and johnson vaccine which is known as janison it is a single dose covid-19 vaccine developed by the janison biotech inc of johnson and johnson to prevent covid-19 it is a recombinant vaccine the researchers added the gene for the coronavirus spike protein to another virus called adenovirus 26 however the adenovirus is modified so it can enter cells but cannot replicate or cause illness vaccine was shown to be 72% effective against moderate to severe covid-19 infections in a clinical trial next is the moderna vaccine which is a rna vaccine manufactured by moderna of cambridge a 10 year old biotech company that consists of rna molecule encased in lipid nanoparticle the rna in both vaccines encodes a slightly modified form of the sars cov2 protein known as spike once taken up by the cell the rna is used to produce the proteins which then trigger an immune response the rna does not enter the nucleus where the cell's genome reside and is degraded by the cell within a day of the injection the moderna vaccine was 94.1% effective at preventing symptomatic covid-19 after the second dose Next is the Sputnik V vaccine or Jam COVID vaccine is an adenovirus viral vector vaccine for COVID-19 developed by Gamaliel Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology in Russia. It is the world's first registered combination vector vaccine for the prevention of COVID-19. 
it is a vector vaccine based on adenovirus DNA in which the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus gene is integrated. Adenovirus is used as a container to deliver the coronavirus gene to cells and start synthesizing the new coronavirus enveloped proteins, introducing the immune system to a potential enemy. Sputnik Light is the first component of Sputnik V, the world's first registered vaccine against coronavirus. The next is the Zyko VD, world's first plasmid vaccine for COVID-19, developed by Indian pharmaceutical company Cadilla Healthcare with the support from the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council. The vaccine contains a DNA plasmid vector that carries the gene encoding the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. The vaccine is given as an intradermal injection using a spring-powered jet injector. In summation, I would like to say that any kind of disruption in our normal lives is a direct or indirect result of human interference in the environment. COVID-19 has rung the alarm bell for the society. So we need to rethink the future of our environment and tackle the climate change and environmental degradation with ambition and urgency. Only we can protect the health, livelihood, food security and nutrition of all the people and ensure that our new normal is a better one. Thank you.